11. Ebola virus is a very fragile little virus that's quite difficult to catch and very easy to stop with good public health measures. We think it comes from animals. Now, the first time it came into humans was 38 years ago, and that was quite a bad outbreak. And since then, it's been coming back about every two years. The symptoms you would have would look a lot like the flu. You'd have joint pains, a sore throat. I mean, this sounds like almost any disease that you can imagine. Later on, it progresses to horrible diarrhea and vomiting. And toward the end, you get so weak that you basically can't sit up. There may be blood leakage, but usually that's on the inside rather than the outside. So, what the doctors in the region are doing is they're essentially giving supportive therapy. With this, with putting fluid back into the person to replace what's lost by diarrhea, for example, you can actually improve the survival rate from 90% fatal, so 10% survival, up to uh, something like a 50-50 chance of living. With each virus and each kind of bacteria, they're biologically unique not just biologically different, but biologically unconnected with the rest of the tree of life, at least all the viruses. You have to have one drug that exactly fits Ebola. The other problem on top of that is that one drug usually isn't enough to stop these, because viruses are very good at growing and very good at changing. So it's not just one drug that we need for Ebola. We need a cocktail of drugs and perhaps a nice vaccine that could be used. These all take a lot of money. And right now, in the history of uh, what we know at least, there have been fewer than 5,000 people who have been infected with Ebola. It sounds scary, but I don't know that there's enough uh, panic or enough people who are potential customers for these drugs to warrant a company, a private company anyway, putting the money in that it would take to develop these.